Hello, I'm Dr Inga Dornan. I'm a senior lecturer in race and gender history at Brunel University London, where I'm also deputy head of the Department of Social and Political Sciences and head of politics and history. I'm also a member of the History UK Steering Committee. I'd like to thank the seminar organisers for inviting me to share some thoughts on new ways to work in the wake of the COVID pandemic. I'll begin by briefly speaking to two of the themes identified for discussion in the seminar, namely the current state of the field and how we might try to make working practices in archives more inclusive. Then I'd like to follow this by sharing some thoughts about how historians and archivists can collaborate and what we might try to put in place to achieve this, most particularly in light of how research and teaching have been impacted by the pandemic. I think it's important for both historians and archivists to be equally aware of the range of challenges which we currently face in our respective professions. And I would welcome a further discussion about how we can work together to identify and address these. The pandemic and national and local lockdowns undeniably impacted access to archives and to the skills and expertise of archivists, which both historians and students of history rely upon. The current state of the field, from my perspective as a historian and university lecturer, is that there appear to be tremendous financial pressures on archives, exacerbated by archivists being placed on furlough, which in some cases has meant that suitably qualified archivists are not always in post to oversee the management or daily operation of archives. This poses a very real threat to the accessibility of archives, to the quality of research which comes from studying in the archives, as well as to the proper preservation and cataloguing of archive collections. We rely on archivists to conduct our research, to sort, to assemble and catalogue collections, to share with us their knowledge and expertise on the archive, to advise and guide us through the archive collections and to point us to related material elsewhere in the archive. During the pandemic, historians and students as well were largely confined to conducting online research, which meant either contacting archives via email with questions about the collection and requesting scanned materials uh, in the hope that there was an archivist there at the other end to help us out or relying upon digitalized sources. Both modes of undertaking research still nonetheless require the archivist's expertise to identify sources relevant to the researcher's subject area and to provide scanned copies of materials or to select which of the archive's materials should be digitalised. At Brunel, we have the British and Foreign School Society collection in our university archive, which is managed by two senior archivists, Mandy Mordew and Phaedra Casey. There are over 2,000 letters in the BFSS archive. Without Mandy's and Phaedra's skills and expertise as archivists, including their ability to decipher 19th century handwriting in order to accurately describe and catalogue the contents of each letter for researchers, it would have been impossible for me and my students to work with this collection. All of which is to say that the archivist skills and knowledge are critical to researchers. As Phaedra Casey, who I just mentioned, said to me in a conversation very recently, archivists act as the intermediary between the archives and the researcher. But the state of the field right now suggests their position and thus the accessibility of the archives for researchers is under threat. With regards to how working practices and archives can be improved and transformed to become more inclusive of people from different demographics, career stages and sectors, I think archivists are probably best placed to speak to that question. But I do believe that universities also have a role to play in this. For example, by highlighting archive and records management as a potential career for students and encouraging them to explore work experience opportunities in the field. We can also perhaps do more within our degree programmes to educate and encourage students from all backgrounds to consider a career in this area. And I'll say more about that in a minute. The challenges here are, I think, accessibility, to further study in this field, as well as the financial attractiveness of archives and records management to graduate students. At Brunel, we attract a diverse range of students onto our volunteer programme at Brunel Archives, 
but relatively few of those from black, Asian, minority and ethnic backgrounds go on to seek a career in archives and record management. And I think this is in part because it's still viewed as a predominantly white and middle class occupation. One of the discussions we might want to have in the seminar is how we can work together to change this. This speaks to the final theme I want to address, which is how historians and archivists can better collaborate and what we need to do to achieve this. It would be helpful, I think, to identify in the first instance what our goals are in strengthening collaboration between archivists and historians. These might include, for example, greater recognition and understanding of the skills and expertise of archivists and how they're essential to the research we conduct. And equally, a greater recognition and understanding of what researchers need in order to access archives and conduct their research, especially in the new working environment we find ourselves in. This might entail clearer signposting of a collection's content, size and quality, uh, user-friendly search tools and clear instruction guides, the digitalization of documents and images, as well as alerting researchers to related and perhaps also unusual items in the archive. We therefore might want to direct our discussion toward how to make the archives more accessible, particularly where there's not always a full-time archivist on hand to assist with research and where some archives remain closed or on restricted opening hours and therefore prevent or limit physical access to them. This further prompts us to consider, I think, how we might collaborate over the digitalizing of archive collections, identifying priority material, for instance, as well as records that may not have received much attention from researchers in the past, but which have considerable relevance to current research and education agendas, helping researchers and teachers, for example, to broaden and diversify their curriculum and scholarship. As a basis for collaboration, I also think it's crucial that we as historians and researchers remain diligent and conscientious about acknowledging the role of archivists and not just the archives in our research. I'm very mindful that my research on the BFSS was only possible because our senior archivist, Phaedra Casey, catalogued the collection so that I could work with it. The role of the archivists in our research means that it's more than a question of politely thanking them in our publications. It's research best practice, to my mind, to formally recognise and acknowledge their role in our work. This formal acknowledgement helps to reinforce the value and skill of archivists and how much, as researchers, we rely upon them in our scholarship. The same may be said when drawing on archives and the skills of archivists for public engagement projects and exhibitions. We might use some of our, the, the time in our seminar to discuss how collaborations between archivists and scholars can simultaneously contribute to promoting and preserving archives alongside public engagement and impact projects with academics. I want to introduce a final point for consideration, which also dovetails with some of the discussions and projects which we've been running in the History UK Steering Committee since the first national lockdown in the UK, um, focused on what we've called um, pandemic pedagogy, in which we've tried to develop and share best practice in how to adapt our teaching to the new conditions presented by the pandemic. One of the most significant challenges we faced as both researchers and teachers and which also impacted our students, was accessing physical resources and materials in libraries and archives. I myself was compelled to recast a research paper I was writing at the time to draw more heavily on digitalised collections. This was also the challenge for our final year dissertation students who found themselves having to reconfigure their projects so as to incorporate more digitalised um, sources. I doubt this trend will reverse, and I imagine there will be a greater expectation among researchers that more and more resources be digitalised. But I'm also mindful of the further pressures this places on archives and archivists, and also as well how this transforms the research experience and practices of historians. In light of this, I'd like to explore how we can better integrate archival research and the skills and expertise of archivists in our degree programmes. Archivists have considerable knowledge and skills to share with students regarding the processes of best research practices. 
at Brunel, I'm looking to see how we can expand um, the role of our archivists in our undergraduate programmes. I hope this will go some way to breaking down some of the barriers students feel when approaching archival research. Um, they're often intimidated by going into archives and asking for help when they're there and not infrequently feel overwhelmed by the sheer scale and volume of archival collections. I think it's crucial that we dispel some of the misconceptions they have about archives and also that we adequately prepare them for archival research at the most basic level, how to use search tools to maximum effect. Bringing archivists into our degree programmes from the first year will, I hope, prove beneficial to our students when they embark on their own research in the archives in their final year. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation and I look forward to discussing these themes and many more with you at the seminar.